The place I'm taking you today is truly a step back in time. The middle part of Florida is best known for its theme parks and attractions, which draw tens of millions of people from around the world every year. As this area continues to grow and modernize, much of old Florida is sadly being lost. That's why it's important to hit the back roads when you're here to experience the way it was in this large, diverse state. From Orlando, take State Road 50 West, about an hour to see a part of the Sunshine State many never have the opportunity to encounter. In the middle of a state forest midway between Terrytown and Ridge Manor is the former community of Richloam. Around the turn of the last century, the Orange Belt Railway came through here with lumber mills established along the line. Operations changed in the early 1900s, and by the 1920s, a man by the name of Sidney Brinson had constructed a post office on this land, which soon evolved into a post office and general store to serve the needs of the residents. Historians say the community came to resemble one you might find in the Wild West. The store was a staple in Richloam until the mid-1930s, when it closed up and became a rental house. It sat vacant and unloved until members of the Brinson family took it over again in the 1970s. Renovations on this little piece of history didn't begin until 2016. Today, the Rich Loan General Store and Post Office is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. On this episode, we take you inside this hidden little gem and hear from the family that runs it. The story of the Rich Loan General Store coming up next. I'm Daisy Brinson. I'm Eric Burke's mother, which Eric is the one that restored the building. And this is an original 1928 building. My husband's uncle is the one that originally built the building and he was the postmaster. This served as their general store, their post office, and the train depot until 1936. This building was built in 1928. The first post office was built here in 1922. That one got robbed and burned because of federal offense and they built this one back. All the metal inside and outside is original. All the doors are original and everything we carry is time period. We make sure it's within the time period that it would have been in a store in the 2030 time period. But we have a picture that was taken from the fire tower, which is the next place up on the right. Mm -hmm. And this was taken in the early 40s and you can still see vehicles out front. So we think the general store operate a little past that. Mm -hmm. But the documentation says 1936 because that's when we lost our post office and that, that's the last documented date we can go by. It's always, you know, it's always been used for something. That's why it kind of stayed in good shape. But when my son got ready to restore it, it was at the point to either we were going to do something with it or the building was going to fall down because you could actually move it. I mean, it was getting in that shape. We always think that maybe why it stood as long as it did is because the metal sandwiching it, you know, to help preserve it. All the other places here in Rich Lawn is gone. The state owns the rest of the land and they haven't, there used to be a one room school. There was a, a sawmill here, turpentine still, and all that's gone. None of those buildings are still in existence. In 1910, there was a census of a hundred people that lived in just Rich Lawn. And this store served for the three communities. It served for Riverland, Rich Lawn, and Clay Sink. And that, paved road out there was the main road from coast to coast until they built highway 50 so this was a really busy corner at one time this is this original spot and that's what makes this so unique is this is the original place where the store was built it's always set here 
And this was the core of the community at the time when Rich Lone was booming. We hope that when they step through the door, it brings them back to their childhood or it brings them back into the time period of the 20s and 30s. And I have so many people that do that. When they walk in, they say, it's like walking back in time. Because we want people to realize what it was like living in Florida in the 2030 time period and what a little general store meant to a community because it was everything. Usually there was only one or two phones in the community and Rich Lone Store had one. And if you look on the wall by the phone, you'll see where he took notes. So when people came in, he'd remember to tell them. They added that in the 40s. They, uh, a turpentine steel they had burned here on the property and they took the bricks and made the fireplace. Hmm. And the tools are the, that all this stuff we found here on the property, and this was all turpentine material. This is what they catch the turpentine in. These were the tools that they used to scar the trees with. Turpentine was a really big business in this part of the state. It was. That was my father-in-law's. He used here to signal the train that we had pickups. And so the train knew to pull over to the side to for the pickups. Otherwise, he'd just throw the mailbag out and you know, take a hook and grab the new mailbag. <laughs> but if, if they signaled the train, then they would pull over to the side and do the pickup. We carry uh, canned peaches, jellies, jams, the country ham and bacon, stone ground grits, cornmeal, flour, things that would have been in the store in that time period. And there's probably a good percentage that's locally made as much as we can, we get it locally, and if not, we get it from the Amish because they can the same way we always can, with no artificial preservatives or anything, no colors, no dyes or anything. In between customers, I sew on a 1915 treadle sewing machine. I hand make all the aprons, the Raggedy Ann and Andy, the sock monkeys. I there's time at Christmas time. I can't make them fast enough. So the general store was everything for their little communities. There was nothing ever people would gather there to talk about what was going on. It was just like the center of their community. And we just want them to feel that when they come sit on their front porch, get a soda, drink, you know, and enjoy the atmosphere and the quietness and real Florida. That'll do it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed this look at one of Florida's hidden gems, the Rich Loan General Store and Post Office. Special thanks to Daisy Brinson for talking to us and showing us around. Tell me what you thought by leaving a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. For more tips and information, be sure to visit our website, chadgallivanter.com, where you can also sign up for our free newsletter, Gallivanter75. As always, Thank you for watching. From the middle of Florida, see you next time.